Hey, it's Matt. Welcome to Practice Perfect University. Today we're going to talk about how to use daily progress notes, i.e. SOAP notes, in Practice Perfect. We'll also be discussing how to add goals, tests, and body charts to them. Class is now in session. Clinical documentation is one of the cornerstones of Practice Perfect and is essential to the daily operations of your clinic. Documentation may refer to a daily progress notes typically known as soap notes for your clients b evaluations re-evaluations or discharge summaries and c external documents such as microsoft word forms spreadsheets images and pdfs in this video we'll be focusing on daily progress notes otherwise known as SOAP notes. Daily progress notes can be reached at any time by first selecting the patient in either the scheduler or the client list and then clicking show client progress notes on the function bar. Likewise, they can be created from any client screen such as the scheduler by simply selecting create the client progress note from the function bar. This is the method we will be demonstrating in this tutorial. Step 2. Select Create the Client Progress Note from the function bar. The following screen will appear. Begin by verifying the service date. If you need to change it, you can do so by clicking the small calendar icon and picking a day. When creating a new daily note from the scheduler, it will default to the date of that specific appointment. If you add any treatment or service charges from within the progress note, the date on those charges will default to the date entered here in the service date field. Then move on to status. It will be set to incomplete at the start. This field should be left as is until you have finished entering the daily note and will be discussed towards the end of this tutorial. Then we have the time in and time out. These refer to the time that the treatment took place. If you use the check-in appointment and check-out appointment functions in the scheduler, then these times will be entered automatically. If not, they can easily be entered manually by selecting a field and inputting the time as follows. Please note that these times must be in 24-hour time. The treatment duration field can work in one of two ways. The first way is to manually enter the length of the appointment. Many therapists choose this method because it allows them to accurately report the amount of hands-on time spent with the patient. The second way is to have duration recorded automatically by entering treatment or service charges directly from within your daily note. By doing this, Practice Perfect will calculate the duration based on the amount of time attributed to each individual treatment or service charge. The duration will be visible on the printed daily note. In this case, just leave the duration blank and it will all be filled out for you. Please note that we do not discuss how to enter treatment or service charges from the daily note in this video. Moving on to the text boxes below, the subjective, objective, assessment, and plan are the real meat and potatoes of the progress notes page, and the reason we refer to these as SOAP notes. However, if you wish to change the headings, you can do so by selecting Settings, and then Customize Progress Notes slash Documentation from the menu bar at the top of the screen. Let's start by examining the text control bar. Here's where you can make adjustments to your font settings, your paragraph style, typeface, size, color, etc. Now, if you wish to bring forward a portion of your previous progress note and possibly make some modifications to them, you can select copy and paste previous notes. Notice how I'm only able to choose from the past three progress notes. I can change the number of notes that appear in this list by selecting settings and then customize progress notes slash documentation and then toggling the number of previous notes to be seen and bring forward on soap note field. Note that you're only able to choose from completed progress notes. Again, 
this method needs to be used per section. Additionally, you can automatically bring forward an entire progress note by checking off automatically bring forward entire previous progress note here. We found this option to be incredibly popular amongst our users. Please note that this option is specific to the individual user. It is not a global setting. Step 3. Now let's look at how we manually fill out our new note. By clicking on one of the fields, you're able to type out your note. There are no character limits or length restrictions. Your note can be as long or as short as you need it to be. You can also create and store categories and phrases using the Paragraph Builder on the right-hand side of the screen. This allows you to quickly complete your notes. Here's how. First, I need to highlight the text to unlock the Paragraph Builder section. Pressing the green plus sign opens up this panel here. This is known as the New Paragraph slash Category Panel. Start by filling out a description of your phrase. Then, place it in a category. You can either place it in an existing category, or you can create an entirely new one. If you'd like the category to be exclusive to this provider, i.e. the one who saw this patient and is completing this note, check off this box here. As for the paragraph text box, this is an exact copy of the text that you highlighted. You have the option of running a quick spell check if needed. And like the category, if this phrase is exclusive to this provider, mark it as such using the box at the bottom of the field. If you wish, you can add associated fees to the paragraph. This will tell Practice Perfect that a certain charge should be suggested when this paragraph is used and the provider is entering charges directly from their notes. Note that this feature works in tandem with the associated fee code recognition function of Practice Perfect. For example, if your custom paragraph cites a specific exercise, then you may want a specific fee code charge, such as therapeutic exercise automatically. Step 4. If you need to edit your categories or your paragraphs, you can do so by first highlighting the item in question and selecting Edit Paragraph slash Category from the top of the list. Conversely, if you need to delete the category or paragraph, simply highlight it and click the Recycling Bin icon. You can also rearrange the order of the categories on the list at any time by simply highlighting them and using these arrows to move them up or down. Step 5. After populating your list of categories and the paragraphs, you're ready to start plugging them into real progress notes. To plug one of your pre-made paragraphs into the note, begin by placing your cursor in the field where you want the phrase to go. Then. Press the small expand icon next to the category heading to reveal the list. And then you may double click the phrase to add it to the note. But daily notes can go beyond mere words. You can also indicate treatment goals, test results, and mark up a body map if you wish. And we're going to show you how. But before we do that, let's ensure that we've completed this portion of the progress note. Step 6. To add a goal to this note, simply click Add Incident Goals from the function bar. The following panel will appear. This is the Incident Goals panel. It is comprised of two tables, the Goals table and the Tests table. Let's begin by looking at the Goals table. Now, if you're updating an existing goal, you'll mostly be working in the Current Visit area. But to add a new Incident Goal, Press the green plus sign. The first column to fill out is code. You may select from our pre-populated list of commonly used goals, or you can create your own from scratch. By selecting the code, the description will be automatically filled out for you. You can make changes to the description by double-clicking the field and editing it as needed. Enter the target percentage that you are hoping to achieve. For example, your patient may be hoping to increase their right elbow's range of motion by 50%.
identify whether the goal is short term or long term in the goal term column. Make note of the date when the goal began in said column. The last percent column automatically indicates the goal's percentage of completion from the last visit. Naturally, this will be left blank if it is your first time adding the goal. However, you will mostly be updating the goals that have already been set up for this client. To do this, you'll be working in the current visit area. Begin by entering the percent of the goal that's been achieved by this visit. Add any comments that are relevant to this session. If the goal was worked on this session, check off the today box. Lastly, the goal end section can be used when the goal is eventually met. Check off the box if the patient has reached the target percentage. Input the goal met date to record when this was achieved. Input the goal end date when you're no longer tracking this goal. Please note that goals are automatically brought forward to the subsequent progress notes. Step 7. The test section was designed to record the results of the functional tests your clinic administers to patients. For example, these tests may include the Oswestry Disability Index or the Functional Reach Test. To add a test result, press the green plus sign and select the relevant test. Record the results of the test in the score column. As a reminder, this is just used to record the test scores and not actually administering the tests themselves. Finally, when you're done, click OK to save your entries. Step 8. Similar to goals, body maps can easily be added to a patient's daily note. While inside the note, select Progress Note Body Chart from the function bar. The following panel will appear. Similar to the goals, the previous body map will be brought forward automatically and just needs to be updated to reflect the patient's current status. To add a pain point to the body map, left-click the diagram. You'll notice a small circle with a number in it where you clicked. It will also unlock the bottom portion of the screen. To edit a pain point for the current note, simply click on the small circle containing the number of the pain point you wish to alter. Begin by entering or updating the patient's pain level on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 the highest. Input or update the nature of the symptom, whether it's sharp, numb, shooting, etc. Choose how often the patient is experiencing the pain. And use the text box at the bottom to describe the symptoms if you wish. Take note of the number in the corner of the box. This will let you know the number of the pain point and help you identify it on the body map when you're working with multiple pain points. If you want to add another pain point, just click another spot on the body chart. Conversely, you can return to a pain point by clicking it. The delete button will remove this specific pain point. Save will store this body map on the patient's client record, and Cancel will cancel the entire entry. Step 9. Once you have finished entering your note, your goals, your tests, and your body map, you're ready to sign and complete the note. We return to the status field near the top of the screen. Your new note will automatically be deemed incomplete initially. Once you are ready, you can change the status of the note to either completed and unsigned or completed and signed. Completed and unsigned is generally used as an interim status, sort of like a placeholder, to remind you to come back and do a final review. Once the note is officially good to go, drop down to completed and signed. Practice Perfect Security can be set to handle completed and signed notes in one of two ways. Either they can subsequently be unsigned, edited, and then signed again, or they can be locked once they're changed to completed and signed and cannot be altered. Your preferred rule can be set up by selecting Settings and then Customize Progress Notes slash Documentation. If you wish completed and signed notes to not be editable once they are signed, then tick K 
cannot change status of completed and signed notes. Please note that this setting applies to all users. So, if you cannot alter signed notes, how would you indicate an after-the-fact correction? Practice Perfect actually allows you to create subsequent notes for the same day which will be tagged as annotations. In essence, it's an addendum to the original note, but on its own page. To create an annotated note for an existing note, you must first be looking at the full original note on the screen. Once displayed, click on the green plus sign. This will force the creation of a subsequent annotated note for the same date. The following panel will appear. Click Yes. After creating the note, return to the Activities by Progress Notes screen. Notice how the annotation box is checked off for this particular note. Now if I try to print either note, they'll both be printed, kind of like a package deal. Step 10. Speaking of printing, you can create a physical copy of your daily notes whenever you need one. Simply open up the note and select print from the function bar or flag the note and click print. It's possible to flag as many notes as you like. The following panel will appear. Here you're provided with several formatting and data options for what should and shouldn't be included on the printed version of your notes. There is no harm in playing with these options until you establish the format that best suits your needs. Select Preview to see what it'll look like, and Print to create the physical copy. Please be aware that you should never leave your computer unattended while working on patient progress notes for security reasons. Thanks for visiting. Be sure to check out the other videos in Practice Perfect University. Take care.